So let us start. So uh, welcome you all in this uh, particular session we are going to talk about the fiscal policy. In, in the previous session we have already discussed the beginning phases so FRBM1 and now we are going to shed light on the FRBM2. So FRBM1 gave the particular idea about that there will be some check on the government also so that government can also uh, have a have a understanding about the government expenditure and especially how they are going to um, take measures in terms of maintaining the the fiscal health of the country. So for that reason uh, we had gone for the FRBM Act and it had put a check by putting a, a target of fiscal deficit of 3 percent of GDP and we were able to meet that. So here it is about the reference book and reading material. So we have uh, we have referred uh, almost the same that we I have already mentioned in the previous lecture. So it remains the same in case you want to explore you can explore these these uh, references. Also FRBM Act uh, was again in operation at that time Pranam Mukherjee was the finance minister and he had come up with the concept of uh, some kind of a new target of zero effective revenue deficit. It was meant to be get adjusted with the grants to the states for the creation of capital assets so whatever grant is special grants or any kind of a special need based payment is being made to the state that will be adjusted and that they they call that as an effective revenue deficit and it, at that time under the finance act this particular frbm act was again made it operational so so effective revenue deficit has some kind of of it is a it has uh, been part of the debate and discussion that whether we should be focusing on this or we should simply going for the revenue deficit. Uh, but uh, I, I think uh, there, there is no agreement that this particular indicator will be dropped. So maybe after some time we will not be able to see this particular indicator but at that time during 2015 it was there. Uh, at the, the, the target for revenue deficit was uh, raised to 2 percent of GDP because at that time we had just recovered from the 2007-8 global financial crisis and at that time we thought that it is always good to have a, a some kind of expenditure. So at, uh, at that point of time this, this, this was the, the, the part of the discussion. And then, then there were also announcement of the medium term expenditure framework uh, and whatever the, the rolling targets that were given earlier it was fixed that it should be giving the the rolling estimates of the three years and then it became the quite a permanent kind of exercise to be part of the FRBM process. So this was, so so we had the FRBM 1, then there was suspension during global financial crisis and then again we started in 2012-13 at that time it was part of the union budget. Then the union budget 2016-17 we had the uh, we, we had the committee to review the FRBM act because uh, at that time the 14th finance commission recommendation had also mentioned about it that there is a time to revisit the existing norms of the FRBM act so that we can uh, we can make it more aligned to the recent changes that we have seen because of the uh, recent developments that we had to undergo so that there are from fiscal policy side also there is adjustment so in the same way that we had seen in case of monetary policy that how from single indicator we focus on the multiple indicator and how how from the bank rate we we arrive at the liquidity adjustment facility and the repo rate in the same way government uh, it was also desired that frbm should be revisited and it should be aligned with the recent changes. So the NK Singh has headed this committee and he submitted the report in January 2017. The, 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 the com committee mentions that the combined GDP target of both centre and its states which is around 49.4 uh, and the 21 percent for the states it should come down to 60 percent which means that 40 percent for the centre and 20 percent for the states by 2023. So the, this target has been given to the center plus the states that you have to reduce the debt to GDP ratio. In case of a state it will be debt to GSDP ratio because we have the gross state domestic product over mentioned there. For, for fiscal consultation the, the government should reduce its fiscal deficit 
from the current 3.5 percent which was there in 2017 to 2.5 percent. So, now it is going to be more restricted. So, so this review committee has suggested that instead of targeting 3 percent which was the target in the FRBM 1 act now it is going to be uh, 2.5 percent by 2003. But considering that we are now in a completely uh, in a in a completely different phase of the economy. So, it will not be able to maintain and now I think the FRBM act for the some for some time it will not be in reach of meeting the target. The committee also recommends that the government should reduce its revenue deficit by 0.25 percentage points each year to 0.8 percent by 2023 from the 0.25 5 percentage to 0 0.80 it has to go which means that it requires the whole lot of uh, understanding about how they will be going for expenditure cut. The uh, uniqueness of this plan is that the panel has suggested that this FRBM act will now be uh, called under the debt and Fis fiscal responsibility act because debt is now going to be the one component. And as it has been mentioned that I mentioned in the beginning about the fiscal rule. So, there we had debt to GDP ratio and the budget balance both uh, coming together. So, this the India is now moving towards the debt and the fiscal indicator both. So, it has taken the path of both rather than simply uh, keeping in mind about the tax. One more unique thing that the committee recommends is the fiscal council. So, this fiscal council uh, the committee has recommended that there should be a committee formed by the senior experts those who are in the area of, of finance and this expert will be outside from the not from the existing pool of the, the individuals. This particular guy will come from, uh, from outside and, and this senior person will be expert in the public finance and he will be given the task to to give a, a particular uh, framework or scenarios for managing this. So, 2.5 percent it will not be just left to the government to manage by own. There will be committee of fiscal council and this committee will use the data resources of the government to recommend the government that where this particular government has been heading and how they can go for. So, in which areas? So, there is a detailed discussion about that that how this fiscal council will help the government to ensure that these targets are met on time with the data analysis, with the back end research, with the scenarios, forecasting, projections, everything it will do. Uh, then we have uh, in India, we have very important institution that takes care the the distribution of resources between center and state. So, so center collects the taxes direct indirect. And then the center uh, as per the finance commission recommendation, it it gives the share to the states and, and it shares the revenue to the states that is called tax devolution. So, as per the 14th finance commission, the tax devolution rate was recommended to be the 42 percent whatever is the total amount. So, out if the government is going to have the tax revenue of total tax revenue of 100 rupees. 42 rupees is recommended to the states that it will be distributed to the states. But for that also the committee has different criteria to decide about. I will shed light on those criteria also. The finance commission is constituted by the president under the article 280 of the constitution and it gives the, the recommendations about the tax revenues between union and states and amongst the states themselves. The first finance commission was set up on the 6th April 1952 under the chairmanship of K. C. Niyogi and duration of this is for 5 years. The 15th finance commission was headed by the N. K. Singh and this committee is, is important. Now, uh, I would sh uh, shed light on the, the 15th finance commission recommendations. So, in case of 15th finance commission what is uh, more important to note is that uh, the, the criteria that was used. So, the weights have been given uh, for different indicators. So, these are the weights given. So, the sum is 100. So, the uh, 14th finance commission has given the weight income distance that what is the national average and how much the states are deviating from the national average. So, that is so based on the per capita income uh, and then the population of 1971, population of 2001. So, the population of 1971 the weight is 0 as per the 15th finance commission, but 14th finance commission has given the weight of 17.5 percent. 
so it is now zero so uh, and the population of 2001 it has the weight has been given to 15 so which means that uh, the 12.5 weights are adjusted somewhere else because 10 was for the population 2011 here and now it is 15 here the area that we have it, it, it remains the same the forest cover it gives a 7.5 the 15th finance commission for forest cover it doesn't give anything then you have forest and ecology it gives 10 demographic performance it gives 12.5 the tax effort that the governments have made in collecting the taxes whatever the local level or the state level whatever or and whatever is in the hand so it is 2.5 so this is the weighting pattern and based on this weighting pattern what it has been had uh, what is it has been found that the UP and Bihar, Uttar Pradesh and Bihar have got the largest devolution in 2000 for 2020-2021 receiving uh, rupees 1,53,000 crore and 86,000 crore respectively. Karnataka and Kerala saw the, the largest decrease in the share of divisible pool with a decrease of 0 0.49 and 0 0.25 percent respectively. Now, now this, this particular aspect is important to deal because sometimes we uh, for cooperative federalism it is always uh, always important that the, the weights that we give uh, we assign it should not be biased towards some states because it has been argued that the most of the states which are population rich which means that we they have the large population they end up getting the higher share in the revenue by default but those states which are uh, which are efficient in managing the population plus the economic activity they, they get the limited share so there are the different ways to compensate the losses but but as per the 15 finance commission report this is what it looks like and then then in in india uh, similar to what we had the state level uh, we had the central level frbm act the 12th finance commission had, had also recommended for the the state level announcement so for the first time i i, I read a, a separate dedicated chapter in the economic survey 2016-17 volume 1 and that had mentioned that how states have done better in managing the finances some states and some states have are laggard so there was a, a comparative analysis of states mentioning about the fiscal responsibility management act and and at the state level so like frbm so uh, in india most of the states had recommended this the based on the recommendation of the 12th finance commission like frbm frl was introduced in the fiscal responsibility uh, at the center the the fiscal uh, responsibility legislation was the, the implementation year adopted by the states with no less than this it had the same target like like a state the fra of the central government was en enacted in the same way fiscal year 2003 4 and most of the states had gone for fra in the fiscal year 2005 6 so this was the case what is called the fiscal responsibility act fra by the states uh, it, it has the rule based uh, target so the the target given to the states was that the fiscal deficit uh, should be the 3% of the gsdp so at the country level you have the gdp at the state level you have the gross state domestic product so this target was given to the state so fiscal responsibility act gave the target of 3% the average revenue deficit was eliminated uh, while the average uh, fiscal deficit was curved to less than 3% of GSTP just as the FRL had mandated. So, so some states it, it was found that the revenue deficit that they were targeting it had disappeared. The average debt to GDP ratio accordingly fell by 10 percentage point after this adoption. The 12th finance commission allowed also states to borrow directly from the market and and uh, there there will be a, some kind of self check so just to ensure or just to promote the fra act so most of the states were given some kind of or, or some kind of incentives to go for borrowing even if they want in the same way that the central government has some kind of uh, a kind of management rule so they come up with the medium term plan medium term reports for the projection 
In the same way, they also had the medium term uh, fiscal policy report and that mentions about the rolling uh, indicators of the expenditure and it was also mentioned over there. And for most of the investment with large investment also, it was quite adjustable and most of, most of the states had uh, some kind of kind of accounting mechanism and with the with the projection of 3 to 4 years so this was the the recommendation of the committee 14 finance commission had recommended the limit to be relaxed by 0.5% zero revenue deficit for most of the states debt to gdp ratio should be lower by 25% and interest payments to GDP ratio should be less than 10% of GSTP. So this one was the limit because in the first stance it was quite successful. So this was also recommended by the state. You will find that the, the some states which had enacted much before then the central government, uh, government so that was the, the Karnataka. So our early uh, adopters were the Karnataka, Kerala. So it was Karnataka, Kerala, Uttar Pradesh. Punjab, Tamil Nadu. So these were the states that had implemented the FRL Act much before that had gone for implementation of the FRL. In case of Karnataka, it was much ahead than most of these states. So, so some of these states even had the the similar kind of of implementation, almost nearby the implementation from the center. So this chart explains that which all states implemented the FRL Act, FRA Act in which at which time. So uh, I also want to highlight some kind of, of recent developments that we will be talking about. So in terms of recent developments, what has happened that uh, it has been found that most of these states are and, and at the country level also we were devastated by the coronavirus outbreak. So it also gives the complete idea that in which all month the there was monthly expenditure outlay decline and how it has been given relief measures in terms of MSC investment, investment in healthcare and other services. So this gives the clear cut idea that how it has been uh, implemented. So here it is that in the first month of April when we were completely under lockdown and then uh, post that May 2020 there was jump from 15%, 57% in May. Then there was June 116 percent. Then there was a, a July 20. We were down again by the 47 percent, 21 percent, 39 percent because at that time we were completely in the peak peak periods. And then after that, we had the jump of in October 129. Then again 249 and 82. So this shows the the pattern where the government has followed and when was the time when government had to take extra measures so so here it is the the in in terms of capital expenditure so this green shows the capital expenditure and this line you have it shows the revenue expenditure revenue expenditure means the maintaining the the existing resources so giving salaries to the staff and all others but in terms of capital expenditure we see that the first period that we had made the investment in May 2020, June 2020, that has uh, uh, that that must have paid dividend in the later months, and in again in October, November we took measures, and it it became, and and by by December to, uh, uh, to 2020, we were able to at least have some stabilization in the uh, in the program. So almost like a, uh, almost like more than 100 percent here, and more than 100 percent here is the jump. Even in terms of GST collection, it appears that in most of these indicators clearly reflect that in November 2019 we had the very smooth chart, but after March 2020 when we had the lockdown, so especially in April, it has the V-shape uh, fall, but but uh, it has the V-shape recovery, uh, so fall and recovery shows the V-shape. So here it is that after April 2020 when we started opening up the the unlock 1 and unlock 2 uh, that, that we had after that it has shown uh, a recovery and it has uh, gone continuously so it clearly shows the impact so in most of the this is not only in case of India the economic survey mentions about the art nirbhar bharat scheme under that there is an investment of around 17 lakhs crore 
and out of that they have they have uh, the table mentions categorically each and every schemes that government had implemented and how much expenditure it has made and and if you just uh, try and understand then you find that almost it 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 it, it covers the the landscape of every aspect of the the well being of the citizens and it it has also gone for investing in almost every aspect including health and others so so the the, the table gives the complete break up that how we have gone in the same way gst collection also they try to justify with some argument that how during march and april when we when when we were in a completely shock condition at that time we had the 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 strongest fall but after that it has gone up and it has uh, and and after that there was not much issue similarly here we have the the major indicators of the fiscal expenditure so whatever we have uh, done in the previous lecture that we are going to see now and this will give you the idea that how we can understand at least we can f follow up something so here it talks about the revenue deficit it appears to be 6.23 now it is going to be in 2020-21 it is going to be 8.52 in the same way the fiscal deficit it is also 7.96 and it is going to be 8 point in, in 2019-20 it was 8.06 and now it is going to be 10.76 which means that 10 lakh score it is it is going to be it is in lakh score but normally the fiscal deficit is is uh, presented in the in in percentage form but here they have mentioned in in the in the lakh score similarly we have the primary deficit which is nothing but the fiscal deficit minus interest payments so this is also going to be positive 6.92 which means that government is going for borrowing for sure and it will require a huge amount of, of borrowing similarly a revenue deficit if you see in terms of uh, decline so 2019-20 we had the growth of 13 percent but uh, it is expected that in 2020-21 will have 36.8 percent but but the idea is that here we have the gross tax revenue of 30 24.23 percent and the total expenditure of 30.42 percent which means that the 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 deficit that we are going to have it is nothing but here we have the the 6.09 because this is what it, it, it looks like that the expenditure is going to be higher net debt receipt also it shows the same uh, here we have the non-tax revenue which is going to be lower because in 2020-21 anyway we are not having a that much capacity uh, for we have just started opening up so it may ta it may take time for businesses to recover uh, in 2020-21 if you see by figures then it appears that each and every indicator is in negative growth that shows that uh, how we are we are going to have this particular indicator functioning so overall what it appears that here we are going to to uh, understand these these indicators represent the stress in the fiscal space of the country and how government is going to manage though there are some rosy scenarios wherein we ex we are now arguing that the 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 economy will have v shape recovery but in actuality it will it will show uh, it will come out with the data that whether it has it is there or not so the so so, so the pulse of the economy may be uh, going in a right direction but we will have to wait for at least 6 months to have a clear cut idea that how it has it has gone so far. So, so far what we have covered is this uh, aspect of the fiscal policy. So, to conclude uh, what, what we have covered is, is that we have uh, covered the FRBM Act and in FRBM Act we have understood that this uh, FRBM Act gave idea for management at the center level so it was implemented also at the state level at the same time and this state level idea given by the 12th finance commission had paid a dividend for the states because some states have done well and some states have implemented the frbm act much before then the then the center and this gives a complete idea that how the the role of the the central government uh, is is important and how states governments are also going for some kind of cooperative federalism where they are also having the similar kind of of, of setups 
the medium term reports that uh, I had mentioned for the FRBM Act required, it also gives the idea for the states. So, the overall uh, all, uh, understanding is that going ahead the fiscal space in India is going to be much more competitive because uh, after the FRBM review committee recommendation there is going to be the, the formation of fiscal council and this fiscal council will keep an eye on the, the real time data collection and also on, on analyzing data and giving estimates to the government that how they should be able to meet the target. And the second aspect is the importance of the finance commission because finance commission as per the 15th finance commission we saw that these uh, these commissions, the, this particular commission has uh, given more uh, weight uh, to the uh, and uh, there, there, ha there has been some adjustment with regard to the weights and, uh, and the, these adjustments are also indicating that some states which are high income states are going to lose money and even uh, and those states which are more by population going to get share. So, this may also create trouble. There was one important issue that, uh, that I wanted to deal in detail, but because of the positive time I did not discuss is the is the devolution, the tax devolution rate that we have. So, in India the, the target is that the revenue deficit should, should go away as, as soon as possible, but so the, so, so the revenue expenditure side should not be taken care of that much, but it should be the, the, the capital expenditure side that, that, that should be given. And the states are also contesting with the center that since in the, in the as per the recommendation of the 14th finance commission the higher tax devolution was recommended, but at the same time central government put a rider that there will be some adjustment with regard to the support given to the central scheme. So, that also became one of the debated topics. One more debated topics was the fall in the GST earnings and as a result the government had not given that much support in terms of the tax share, tax revenue share with the state. So, if you could remember it, it had become one of the, the important topics when chief ministers were not happy that how they will be dealing with pandemic if they are not given the, the timely devolution. So, those aspects are, uh, are important to note. Another aspect that uh, I thought I should be, be touching upon is the, is the role of GST because 2017-18 economic survey and even 2018-19 economic survey mentions about the successes of the GST because in the beginning it, 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 it has not given the right kind of signal. But after, uh, after um, uh, one year, we, it was some kind of uh, some some kind of infrastructure related issue and that was sorted out. So, that has also started giving us some kind of positive outcome, but given that the economy is in a completely different time and it may need some more more years to, to come back to that stage where we can, st we can again start de debating on which all measures should be implemented or which are not. So, for this particular course, I think these, these two lectures will be sufficient to give the idea about the, the India's fiscal policy and which all indicators are important. Keep in mind that the fiscal deficit is one indicator that we all should bother about and the both legs of the policy, fiscal and monetary are important for the management of the overall economy. So, from the beginning if you trace down the history, so we were relying on more on taxes, but the post-1991 period we had the services sector booming. So, that has also given a lot of boost to the, the tax revenue and this resulted in coming to this stage. So, uh, I will conclude with this. Thank you. Thank you so much.